It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. Good evening. This is David Ross, speaking for your regular host, Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longine Chronoscope. Mr. William Bradford Huey, editor of the American Mercury, and Mr. Henry Hazlitt, contributing editor of Newsweek magazine. Our distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable Herbert R. O'Connor, Senator from Maryland. Senator, I'm very happy to welcome you to Chronoscope this evening. As you're a member of the Senate Internal Security Committee, I'd like to begin by asking you what your impression is of this uh, three-man panel report that was turned in by the United Nations, uh, for the United Nations, to uh, Secretary General Lee. Now, Mr. Hazard, I'm, I approve uh, of the conclusions uh, reached by the international jurists. Uh, these three distinguished uh, uh, attorneys uh, have done a comprehensive job. Uh, I regret that uh, uh, it was necessary, really, to uh, invoke their aid because the questions presented seem to us to be very clear, and that is that subversives, those individuals of American citizenry uh, who are uh, disposed to work against the interests of the United States, we feel ought never to have been employed. Uh, in the United Nations, and the fact that tonight some 15 of them are either under suspension or have been uh, separated from the uh, service uh, indicates that there was uh, very much to be done. I do think that the conclusions reached by the uh, international panel uh, are to be approved. Well, there were several important conclusions there. The first one in importance seems to me that anybody who was an active member of the Communist Party could be dismissed. I assume that you agree with that thoroughly. Wholeheartedly. And then there was another, rec another recommendation that anybody who, had, who admitted that he had been subversive in the past could be suspended until his record was looked into. I think, assume you agree with that, well, too. That, that is correct. I and third, and I thought quite an important one in view of the public uh, confusion on the point, was this, that anybody who refused to testify on the ground that it might incriminate him could be dismissed and should be dismissed on the ground that he had uh, created a suspicion of guilt by his refusal to answer. Now, do you agree with that final point? I do, Ms. Hassett, but I would like to just add a, another word or two uh, in respect to that. Our principal difficulty uh, in the hearings up until this very day uh, has been that uh, many of our people, of our citizens, labor under a misapprehension. They feel that having secured a position with an international organization, that they uh, are beyond the reach uh, of uh, a regularly constituted uh, agency of the federal government inquiring into their actions, not as United Nations members, not uh, in relation to the particular work, but uh, prior to their uh, association with the organization or outside of the scope of that work. Uh, and we, of course, have been definitely of the belief that uh, the Senate committee has a right to inquire into their uh, affiliation with the Communist Party, for example, well, <coughs> or their engagement in subversive activities. And when they decline to answer on the ground that uh, to answer would tend to incriminate them, we feel that that puts them under suspicion to such an extent that they are not suitable persons uh, to be in the Secretariat of the United Nations. Now, sir, to clarify just a bit, many of our viewers, I'm sure, feel that your committee is deliberately harassing the United Nations. Now, number one, the committee is, is the McCarran Committee, isn't it? It is the McCarran Committee, a regularly constituted uh, subcommittee of the Senate Judiciary. And you're holding Committee. hearings in New York, and, and, and who are your colleagues on that committee, sir? Well, Senator McCarran of Nevada, Senator Ferguson of Michigan, Senator Watkins, Senator Jenner, Senator Willis Smith, the former president of the American Bar Association, Senator Eastland of Mississippi, and myself. Now, uh, have you found evidence that there are communists uh, employed, American communists employed by the United Nations? Definitely. 
And, and, it's, and it's your position that you, you have a right to, to, to investigate these people and to expose them? Not only a right, uh, but a duty. Now, are you a, a supporter of the United Nations, sir? Yes, uh, I'd like to, uh, to just amplify on that a bit. I am not one who believes that just because these uh, uh, little problems have arisen, uh, possibly not so little, but definitely problems, that that is a reason for the uh, abolition of the United Nations as such. I do not think that. You don't think it'll be necessary to burn down the barn no. to get rid of the rat? I do not think so. I feel that the uh, objectives of the UN uh, are so important in this critical period that we should give support to the UN. And we believe that ultimately our action will restore the confidence of the American people, which I am regret to say uh, we felt was being shaken when revelations were brought out that uh, communists, people who had been discharged from departments in Washington for uh, their doubtful loyalty, are found uh, in the Secretariat of the United Nations. You think well, there's an anomalous situation created here, Senator. Now, my understanding of this committee report, this panel report, was that uh, Lee, the Secretary General, could fire any member of a non-communist nation who was guilty of being a communist, but that he, that he couldn't fire a communist, of course, from a communist nation. Now, doesn't that create a very anomalous position within the United Nations? It does. And in all fairness to Mr. Trigby Lee, I feel that the uh, responsibility has not been his, or the fault, if any, has not uh, been his, because I think he has made a genuine effort to uh, uh, discharge his responsibilities and at the same time to retain the status of the UN as it was originally conceived. It is, of course, an international organization. Its secretariat is not supposed to be under dictation from any member uh, uh, nation. And consequently, uh, he has had to chart a course which would be uh, between that of uh, uh, giving uh, recognition to the rights of the United States, for example, uh, as against uh, the communist countries. But well, doesn't the very fact that we have communist nations as members of the organization make the organization either ineffective or effective as a sounding board for communism? Exactly so, and it is to be expected that uh, with the international organization, including communist uh, nations, that of uh, necessity their representatives uh, in the secretariat will be sympathizers uh, with their uh, particular would, government. Would you, you think Russia should keep the veto power that it at present has? Well, uh, I, I think, of course, that there are uh, uh, reasons on both sides. I do not think, of course, that uh, uh, it should be carried to the extent that it has because, I, uh, in a way, uh, it demonstrates the uh, uh, fact that uh, Russia is not sincere uh, in their... Uh, uh, in their uh, uh, efforts to uh, uh, achieve the objectives of the UN. Uh, but I, but S Senator, is this a fair statement, sir, that our uh, keeping the United Nations in New York, allowing it to meet here, that is a, a calculated risk on the part of our nation, isn't it? It is, and it calls for this, this one extra consideration. I think as the host nation, the United States uh, is uh, within its rights in demanding that uh, uh, extra precautions be taken to uh, guard uh, the internal security of the United States. Uh, moving on from the United Nations, sir, I believe your committee uh, found a, a rather interesting case of communism in the, inside the armed services, did it not? Yes, that was in the, th in the Lieutenant Thurman case, the very disgraceful one. And, uh, and you found that uh, an officer in the army uh, was actually in charge of prisoners on Koji Island, wasn't Actually, it? he has been commissioned. He's still in the army, although uh, he's under uh, observation by the, uh, uh, the military authorities. He had been commissioned, uh, had gone to Koji, and had actually been in charge well, of some 40,000 40, prisoners. 40, 40, prisoners of war. Now, that's, now that your committee has called attention to that situation, do you think that it's being corrected? Well, I certainly uh, think it uh, ought to be, and, my, and I uh, have enough confidence in the, uh, uh, in the Secretary of uh, Defense of the entire military establishment to believe that they are going to the, uh, to the bottom of it, as he should. Well, weren't the circumstances rather remarkable under which he was taken in? Yes. Didn't he refuse to answer some question of importance? Yes. In the what? application for commission, 
uh, in answer to the questions as to whether he is or has been a member of subversive organization, uh, he declined to answer uh, that on constitutional grounds. Well, and he was nonetheless accepted. He was nonetheless accepted. And Senator, we can't, uh, our viewers I know wouldn't want you to leave without recalling the fact that you were uh, part of the Kefauver investigation. Now, uh, after uh, looking back in retrospect on the Kefauver activities, do you think that that uh, was useful for the country? I think highly useful, yes. Yes, I do. Yeah, you, were, you were one of those, I think, that made uh, uh, Mr. O'Dwyer uh, enjoy the climate down in Mexico, I believe. Well, uh, at least uh, uh, he has sojourned there for the period since that time. Yes. Well, uh, what, what do you think about the situation as far as crime in our cities now? Do you think that it, it's still one that, uh, that uh, calls for investigation? Oh, I think undoubtedly so. I, I do not think... Uh, uh, the uh, work of any one committee in a limited time would clear up the uh, very uh, unfortunate situation that has existed in America in the large metropolitan areas particularly. And, and since you are not to be a member of the new Congress, sir, is it your opinion that the new Congress should continue such an investigation? I think there uh, uh, are many things to be said in favor of some periodic check whether it would be of a committee set up uh, as the Keith Arbor, uh, committee was, uh, or whether it would be uh, one that would give just a review of conditions in the country as well. Well, well thank you very much for being with us this evening, sir. Great pleasure. The opinions you've heard our speakers express tonight are entirely their own. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Mr. William Bradford Huey and Mr. Henry Hazlitt. Our distinguished guest was the Honorable Herbert R. O'Connor, Senator from Maryland. The problem of selecting a Christmas gift of great prestige for someone near and dear is most happily solved with a Longine watch. Discriminating men and women appreciate the elegance of Longine watches, their greater accuracy, their faithfulness, and world honors confirm their judgment. For among the world's finest watches, Longines watches alone have won 10 World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medal awards, and highest honors for accuracy from government observatories. Yes, the problem of selecting a Christmas gift of great prestige for someone near and dear is indeed most happily solved with a Longines watch. Yet you may buy and proudly give a Longines watch this Christmas for as little as 7150, and may I add, if you pay $71.50 or more for a watch, you are paying the price of a lawn jean, and you should insist on getting a lawn jean, the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored Christmas gift, premier product of the Lawn Jean Whitnor Watch Company, since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. This is David Ross, speaking for your regular host, Frank Knight, reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. Tuesday Night Thrills, Danger, on the CBS Television Network.